Hey everybody, Matt from 90thPercentile.ca here. For access to more study notes, practice questions, mock exams, and end chapter question videos, visit 90thPercentile.ca and sign up for your free trial today. Link below in the description. Here we're talking about currency exchange rates. Key two topics are spot rates and forward rates. Um, of course, spot rates are you know quotes that are available for trading today, while forward rates are you know derivative instrument that can be traded in the future. Key types of spot rates that we're going to talk about are direct quotes and indirect quotes. Um, really quickly, direct quotes is basically you know just talking about the way that that these are, these currency rates are displayed in the market and they're Direct quotes would be a price currency to a base currency. Um, so you have the price currency first and the base currency second. And as a quick example, you could have like Canadian dollar to USD equals 1.3. Um, and all this means is one USD is equal to 1.3 Canadian dollars. So this would be an example of a direct quote and an indirect quote. You know, if you wanted to find it the opposite way around. Um, it's so like how many USD is one Canadian, you would just take the reciprocal one over 1.3. So that's the quick lowdown on direct and indirect quotes. Cross rates, basically all this does is we can imply rates for a currency. Um, if we don't have it by multiplying direct quotes or indirect quotes that we have in the market. And you'll see some, through some examples that, you know, if we multiply a bunch of rates, some stuff cancels out and we can find the rate that we're looking for. And moving on, we're talking about forward rates. We're going to talk about a no arbitrage condition that equates spot rates and forward rates. And this is mainly reliant on interest rates, risk-free interest rates that are present in each country of the currencies that we're talking about. And then when we calculate some forward rates, we'll also be discussing the quoting convention, um, which is just a way to say how forward rates are presented in the market versus versus spot rates. So with that, let's jump into the questions. In order to minimize the foreign exchange exposure on a euro denominated receivable from a German company in 100 days, so euro companies receiving euros and they're British, right? So their operations are in pounds, mainly in pounds, and they're receiving euros 100 days from now. To minimize the FX exposure, what they're going to do is they're going to enter, in, enter into a 100-day forward contract and they're going to sell euros. Now they're going to sell euros forward and buy pounds, right? So if they do this, they can lock in the exchange rate that they're going to convert this at right now and they're not going to have much foreign exchange or they're not going to have any foreign exchange exposure. So B is the answer. They could also do something um, like if they wanted to speculate, this, this is a quick side note, like if they wanted to speculate and they thought that euros were going to appreciate, if euros were going to appreciate versus pounds, um, they would effectively do nothing. And then in a hundred days, they could just, you know, sell euros and get more pounds. Um, but in this case, like we said, we want to minimize the FX exposure. So that's done through forwards. What will be the effect on a direct exchange rate quote if the domestic currency appreciates? So a direct quote, a, a direct quote basically just takes, um, like, like the way it's displayed is you have the price currency as the first currency or the numerator and the base currency as the de denominator. And in a direct quote, the price currency will be domestic, the domestic currency and the base would be the foreign currency. So as an example, let's say we have like a company in Paris. Um, so obviously their operations are in euros and they were exchanging pounds because they had you know, some operations in London or something. This euro is the price currency and the domestic currency and then the pounds is foreign. And the way this reads, is that one pound, so the base currency is one. So one pound costs 1.1211 euros. So now that we know that, we can go back to the, qu the question. What will be the effect on a direct exchange rate quote if the domestic currency appreciates? So if this, if the euro appreciates here, 
it's going to cost less euros to buy one pound, right? So it could be like euro appreciates, and now it's only 1.09 euros to buy one pound. So this whole number here would decrease. An executive from Switzerland checked into a hotel room in Spain and was told by the hotel, hotel manager that one euro will buy 1.2983 Swiss francs, CHF is Swiss francs. From the executive's perspective, an indirect exchange rate quote would be, which one of these? So an indirect quote is just the reciprocal of a direct exchange rate quote, right? So we can create the direct one first. From this information, we have Swiss francs to euro, and it's 1.2983, because it costs, a one euro costs, 1.2983 Swiss francs. So to create the indirect quote, we just go one divided by two nine. Oh, sorry, 1.2983. And we get 0 0.7702. So I'll come back to our answers. It's not this. It's going to be one of these. Um, and the answer is going to be a, so it's a bit, you know, weird how this is. Um, the indirect quote would just switch these, right? So it switches euros and Swiss francs, and that's because we're taking the reciprocal, right? So it's like if one euro, um, like in the direct quote, if one euro costs 1.29 Swiss francs, the opposite way of that would be 0 0.7702 two euros cost one Swiss franc. So it's just the reciprocal. An exchange rate between two currencies has increased to 1.45. If the base currency has appreciated 8% against the price currency, the initial exchange rate between the two countries was closest to what? So now we have um, price divided by base is 1.45, that's the exchange rate now. But previously, it was something else, right? Because the, the base currency appreciated 8%. So if the base currency appreciated 8%, this number would be lower, right? Because previously, it would have costed less of the price currency to buy one base currency. So the way you would calculate this would just be like this, 1.45 is a new currency divided by whatever it was previously. So just put X, subtract one equals 0 0.08. And we can you know, do some algebra, 1.45 over X equals 1.08. And then we can do, let's bring it up here, um, X equals 1.45. Thought about 1.08, and we get an answer of 1.3426, which is right here. So if you look at it, right, so this is the exchange rate now, and previously it was P price over base equals 1.3426. So you can kind of see here that this was the 8% decrease or 8% increase relative to what it was previously. You could even like double check and do 1.3426. This is like intuitively look at it times 1.08. And you would also get the 1.45 here, which shows that it appreciated versus the price currency. Here we have some spot rates for some different currencies and we're asked to find the cross rate for South African Rand to Hong Kong dollar. So this is done by some, you know, some simple multiplication and we just cancel a bunch of stuff out. So this is basically like the implied rate for um, the implied cross rate or implied, you know, rate for South African rands, a Hong Kong dollar, given the, the rates here. So what do we need? We need czar over HKD. And what do we have? Do we have something like basically what I'm looking for is something with HKD on the bottom. And we have this right here, CNY over HKD, 
and we've got to multiply this by something that has um, so that we can ran on top and then C and Y on the bottom, right? So it's got to be something like this. So it's our or C and Y. And the reason why is because when we multiply these together, we have this will cancel out and this will cancel out and then we're left with exactly what we need, right? This is R over HKD. So let's see what we have. Let's see whether or not we have this. Um, we have C and Y over HKD. We have that. So it's 0 0.8422. And do we have South African RAN over C and Y? We do not, right? We have C and Y over Zar, so we got to take the reciprocal of this to, to, to flip it. So it's going to be times 1 over 0 0.9149. And this effectively is, by doing this, you know, we're converting C and Y to Zar. We're converting this, if you just take the reciprocal, we're converting it to Zar over CNY, right? So if we were to multiply this out, we would get 0 0.9205. So this is our rate for South African RAN over HKD. And the answer is A. This one takes the cross rates and takes it one step further where we're asked to find an arbitrage profit. Still dealing with the same spot rates. Um, but here we have another dealer giving a South African Rand to Swedish Crown, I believe, um, cross rate of 1.1210. And basically what we need to do is compare this to the rate that's actually in the market, right? So we got to find another cross rate since we don't have this rate. And we need to find Zar over a sec. And what do we have? We have sec on the bottom here. So we can multiply it by... Um, CNY over a sec. And then what we would need is um, CNY on the bottom here to cancel it out and ZAR on top. Because then this and this we cancel out and we get our rate that we're looking for. So what do we have? We have this rate here. So we can put that in 1.0218. We don't have this rate Zara over CNY, but we can take the reciprocal of this to get that. 1 over 0 0.9149. And if we multiply this out, we get a rate of 1.1168. So the difference between the two rates right so this is what we calculated what's in the market and this is what another dealer is quoting so the difference between the two is the 1.1210 minus what we just calculated 1.1168 so now we've got to figure out the arbitrage profit that can be earned and they're giving us some uh different combinations here so we can just go one by one so for a they're telling they're telling us in all these uh, questions to trade a million of some currency. So if we're trading um, a million Swedish crown, it would look something like this, where we're doing one million times. And remember multiplying it. So this is czar over sec. So we're trading um, the base currency, right? So like if we're trading um, a million crown and we get 1.1210 South African Rand per or per crown, then it would, you know, we would get like 1.1210 million Rand for, for, for each million we trade, right? But what we're looking for is the, the difference that we can get. So times 1.1210 minus 1.1168. And if you multiply this out, we get just one second. We get 4,000 
200 South African Rand per million that we trade by profiting the difference, right? So in A, this answer is wrong. Um, you know, we don't have to go one by one so we can see the answer here is per crown traded. Um, so this is going to be our answer here, C. Here we have Brazil to Mexican spot rate listed by dealer is 0 0.1378. So this is spot. And then we have a six month forward rate at one zero point one four one nine three. This is forward. And it's asking for the six month forward points. So the, all, all this is is like the way um, forwards are quoted or like displayed in the market versus a spot rate is you would have the spot rate today. And then instead of giving like the actual calculated forward forward rate, it'll be plus some forward points. Um, so like plus, you know, 500 would be like a, could be like a six month rate. And then plus like 1500 could be like a 12 month rate. Um, it's just like, don't think too much into it. It's just the way that these are displayed in the market. Like they could just, you know, give the actual rate in each of these, right? Like this number might not be exact, but um, there's just, like I said, it's the way it's displayed in, in terms of why it is, uh, you know, couldn't give you the answer. It doesn't really matter anyway. Um, it's just uh, the convention that the forward market uses for, for currency. So um, to calculate the six month forward points, like I said, it's the difference between the forward and the spot. And these, by the way, are denominated in units of 10,000, which we'll, we'll show in a second, right? So if we were coming back up here, we could take the difference between these two and we would get 0 0.14193, subtract 0 0.1378. And if you do this, what do you get? One, one four. Sorry, one sec. You get 0 0.0. 00413 so this is like the you know numeric difference between the two but then the forward points like i said are in units of 10,000 so you would multiply this by 10,000 and your answer would be 41.3 and it's plus 41.3 right because the forward rate is greater than the spot rate if it was less then it would be the negative here we're talking about forward premiums so a forward premium indicates an expected increase in demand for the base currency if the interest rate is higher in the base currency than the price currency, or the interest rate is higher in the price currency than the base currency. So we have another formula here that the curriculum gives us, and it's this is basically the no arbitrage condition of a of a forward rate um, in terms of you know currency rates, and it says that the forward rate, and it's a price versus base convention, so direct quote is equal to the spot rate times one uh, one plus the risk-free rate or I of the price currency, like in, in the price currency's country, and divided by one plus the risk-free rate in the base country. Um, so for forward premium, this would be greater than this, right? So we need to have this whole number or this whole part of the equation um, be greater than one, right? And in order for that to happen, we would need the interest rate of the price currency to be greater than the interest rate in the base currency. So that's gonna be our answer. Interest rate is higher in the price currency than the base currency. Um, and quick tangent on this, like basically what it's saying is that it's a no arbitrage condition because like the theory is that um, taking two different currencies and investing at the risk-free rate in their country, even after FX exchanges, even after you're exchanging currencies, it, it should be equal. Like you shouldn't be able to get an arbitrage profit by, let's say like, let's say I'm, you know, a US company and I like buy euros and then invest at the euro risk-free rate and then convert back to USD 
this should be the same, like this whole transaction should be the same as if I just invested in the USD risk-free rate, which kind of makes sense, right? Um, like if this ever doesn't hold, there's going to be some large money managers who are going to take advantage of it. The Japanese yen, it's Australian dollar spot exchange rate is 82.42. So Japan being price, Australian being base. The Japan interest rate is 0.15% and the Australian interest rate is 4.95%. If the interest rates are quoted on the basis of a 360 day year, the 90 day forward points and the Japanese yen to Australian dollar exchange rate would be closest to which one of these. Um, so you can notice right away, like the Japanese yen interest rate is less than the Australian interest rate. So this quote is going to trade at a discount. Um, so you can immediately like cross this one off because the, like the positive forward points here show that this rate is going to be higher in the forward market, but that's not true. Um, so we're left with these two, right? But regardless, we can use the same formula that we just had and we can take our spot rate, which is 82.42 and um, the price interest rate, which is 0 0.15 percent. And we have to multiply this by 90 over 360, right? Because it's a uh, we're only doing it for, no, for one quarter. So this is like an annual interest rate, but it's only one quarter in the future or 90 days in the future. So you multiply this by 90 over 360 and divide this whole thing by one plus the Australian rate, which is 4.95%. Same thing times 90 over 360. And if we run this out, let's look at it here. We get, um, I'm not going to do all the math just to save time, but 82.42 times 0 0.98815, which is a forward rate of 81 81.4433. Now to calculate the forward points, we got to calculate the difference between this forward rate and the spot rate. So it's 81.4433 minus spot rate of 82.42. And we get negative 0 0.97668, which, you know, you can just see it's B right here, but we can also like be proper and multiply by 10,000 and you would get exactly this, the negative 97.7. In practice, both a fixed parity regime and a target zone regime allow the exchange rate to float within a band around the parity level. Um, the most likely rationale for this band is that the band allows the monetary authority to do which one of these. So really quickly, um, whenever a country or like a central bank or the government or whatever fixes its exchange rate to another global currency. Um, like it's not as simple as just saying, okay, our currency is one to one with US dollar. <laughs> it, it would be nice, but like there's some work that needs to be done. So like Panama, for example, is one to one with the US dollar. Um, they can't just, like I said, say it's one to one. They actually have to buy and sell its currency relative to the USD in the FX markets to, you know, impact the supply and demand of its currency and make sure it's, it's exchange rate is equal to one to one with the USD. So like if let's say that, uh, Panama, I think it's Baloba, I think that's the name of the currency. Let's just call it P and M. Um, so if the Panama currency is, has depreciated versus the USD and it's like, you know, one USD equals like 1.1 Panama, then they would need to appreciate this value, right? To make it one-to-one. -one. So to do that, they would take their foreign currency reserves, like the US currency reserves that they have on hand, and they would sell USD and buy its own currency in the market. So this is, you know, some monetary policy that if they're, you know, fixing an exchange rate one-to-one, -one, they have to do, 
or else their their, their peg is gonna is gonna fall. Is is it's not gonna be credible, right? Like it's gonna be all over the place. So fixed parity regime and target zone kind of give like you know a range, so plus or minus a couple percent, where their um the currency like their home currency can can be valued relative to like their target currency. So like you know the Panama could be could be equal to like you know 0 0.98 to 1.02 USD. So there's like a little bit of a range, right? And by doing this, if the currency falls to like 0 0.99, they don't necessarily have to engage in the transactions that I just said. So they have more discretion in monetary policy. 